Part 2 Dialogues in Budapest We through the Divine The Divine through us Immediately after the invasion of Hungary by Nazi troops, the persecution of Jews begins. The Jewish population in the provinces where we are living is the first to be transported to the concentration camps. The arrests have not yet begun in Budapest, but all roads leading to the capital are tightly controlled by the Nazis to prevent Jews from seeking refuge in the city. Nevertheless, Hannah and Yosef decide to flee from the endangered provincial zone to Budapest so as to be able to await further developments in the unoccupied apartment of Hannah's parents. I wish to accompany them. We set out from Budeliget late one evening, making our way along the unguarded footpaths through the dark forests embracing the western part of Budapest. I take the lead, with Hannah and Jozef following a short distance behind. At last we emerge safely at a large tram station, Huvos Volgi, where we are able to mingle unobtrusively among the throngs of the city. Friday, March 31st, 1944. Number 41. Dialogue with the One Who Measures. Today we await the first dialogue in the apartment of Hannah's parents, in the Gare Utka, which is situated in the Pest section of the city. The front windows face a noisy grey street not far from the main east side railway station, Kileti. After the peace and calm of the tiny village of Budeligate, everything here in Budapest seems abominably dismal and loud. The one who measures speaks. Listen carefully. The lock ebbs. The seed swells. The weighing scales are being filled. Here above, burning eyes are watching. Now you live rightly. Indeed, we did everything necessary but with calm. The one who measures sees. The danger recedes. Your hand is ready. My sword does not cut, it protects. I am amazed that our inner attitude is more important to the angels than our outer danger. Existence weighs heavy, but for the one who does not err, the burden becomes uplifting wings. The new unfolds. The act is not burden, but seed from which sprouts the new. Danger passes, the seed remains. A gentle breeze arises, and in the proper moment the act sprouts, the act sown in you by the divine. Take good care of the seed. It is so small. It can be lost through the smallest crack. The one who measures speaks. Live rightly, my sword protects. The mystery of the seventh force burns in its tip. Divine grace, bow your heads. Be touched by the tip of the sword. May the divine be with you. The trial persists. Those who persevere shall be redeemed. Who is peace? May divine peace be with you. Then the curse cannot reach you. Who is life? If you live in the divine, you cannot fear, and you deserve no other fate. The seven forces converge at one point. This is the mystery, and this is the way. If a single force is missing, my scale is unbalanced. I urge you, be aware. One single lack can be decisive. Be alert, hope. Adore the one and only. All of us in the circle serve the divine, each according to our own task. I am the one who measures, but I am also the gardener. 
I watch over you, tiny blossoms on the tree. I watch over you, for cutting is not my only means of serving. I cut only what is bad. You have come a long way in a short time. You have left the old behind you. But woe unto you if you look back. The house is caved in, you can no longer live there. You had to leave it at the decisive moment. Woe unto you if you look back, for behold, ahead of you, the way is already free. The one who measures has spoken. What has been is dead. What shall be will never be lost. The gardener rejoices at the brightening sky as the seed begins to grow. Friday, April 7th, 1944, number 42, Dialogue, Good Friday. Throughout Hungary, everything has come to a standstill. The Nazi occupation has petrified daily life. We miss our work tremendously. In our forced inactivity, we become ever more sensitive to the horrible news and rumors which spread like wildfire through the city. Greetings to the four of you. The choir of angels brings a message. It is your task to pass it on. The cross is not the sign of death. Die with him and you live eternally. The cross does not let you go. To fulfill its sign is your task. Die with him, that is the first half of the task. Three days, the time, past, present, future. In the tomb, wrapped in linen, soothed with balm, the body reposes. Dawn approaches, body lives, but time expires. Run out is the time of death. People surround the tomb, and within, nothing, only the shroud. The shroud has been cast away. Death is dead, and eternal life blazes up. The second half of the task is live through him. At his feet is the angel of death, faithfully serving the law. Ü is grace, and grace is above the law. If you have total faith, grace is yours too. But it is not yours to keep. Through you it acts below. Without faith you lead everything to death. This is the law. The pregnant whirlpool gives birth to hell, and the name of hell is the old which no longer serves. The body is not the corpse, the body is not matter. The body is seed that grows and resurrects through the divine. The body is plan, not organ. The body is who, what makes the seed a seed. The pod, it can never sprout. You are body and seed through the divine, and it is Ooh, who shall grow through you. Sacred mystery. We are angels. Our word is truth, for we live through the divine. Our drink is light. Our song is praise. All our service is for the divine. We serve together. We are one. Four pillars reach to heaven, uniting heaven and earth. We are the vault, and the earth is our foundation. The dwelling is ready, the wedding approaches, the wedding of heaven and earth. After the wedding, the newborn. Who? Who already dwells in you? 
May U be sheltered in your heart. In the circle we sing praise, no longer apart, but together with you. For our way has become one. With you we perish, or with you we are purified. The pod is weight. If U breathes on you, the seed begins to grow. The time is near. The time is far. Time is no more. Timelessly, U grows in you. There is only one way. Bear the child, the new child, no more lowly stable. Be at the highest point, always. We are there. Behold, it is also our child. Its fragile body is still that of a child, yet heaven and earth tremble before it. The milk that it suckles is the power of soul. Loyal servants watch over it. Be loyal. Hearts are filled with it, and what is filled knows pain no more. Above you hovers the multitude of angels. May peace descend over you, but pass it on. It is not your own. All that belongs to us is U, and we belong to U. This is our message. We through the divine, the divine through us. For some time now, the angels have been speaking in a rhythmic style, and it is less personal than the dialogues in Buddha Liget had been, which irritates me. I have never been fond of poetry, and I am unable to grasp the purpose of this new form. I feel like a baby that is given solid food instead of milk for the first time and does not like it. I miss the practical instructions of Buddha Liget, and I am disappointed at no longer being able to ask my very important questions. I am aware that Hana is only human able to put the message of the angels into human language, and so I blame her for this new rhythmic form. Of course, I couldn't possibly blame the angels. However, today I am pierced by the terrible words, with you we perish. They sting like a whiplash, but also help me to a new realization. I discover that this rhythm is directly touching and nourishing me without any kind of a detour through my intellect. The end of today's dialogue fills me with astonishment. We through the divine, the divine through us. The dignity I feel in this human-divine balance is so powerful that I am unable to grasp it in its full profundity. Sunday, April 9th, 1944. Number 43. Dialogue. Easter Sunday. The mere body is dead forever. The living lives forever. And yet from birth until death they are united. What you call life is the task. For the life active in its task, death is the servant. For the life passive in its task, death is the master. Birth and death belong together, not life and death. Here the soul that has fear is in error, for life lives eternally. Friday, April 14th, 1944. 
Number 44. Dialogue. We are many, but our word is one. Grace streams through us and we never weary. The life that we live is the grace that we give. Giving compensates weight. Thirst for the new. Fire is given to you. Eternal thirst. Pass the fire on. The seven souls are your dwelling. Your foot rests on the first. Six enfold you from toe to head. And the seventh is your crown. Each of the seven souls acts. Truth is. Love grows. Rhythm and harmony move. New awareness creates. Peace reposes. Joy and bliss radiate. The primal source is a great mystery, unspeakable, inexpressible ecstasy, fulfillment. Eternal giver, never tiring, eternally acting, only through the divine do you act. The origin of all light is U. The ground of all space is U. The faith of all being is U. Every song rises up to U. Whoever strives toward U never wearies. Every scent rises up to U. Every mountain points to U. Whoever seeks finds the way. Behold, the only way is U. Every other way is delusion. Every word fades before U. U is the dwelling and U is the dweller. The force of the seventh is yours. Take it, eat it, then act through it. May giving and taking be in balance. Balance is needed on the peak. There balance, peace and silence are essential. We are many. Through us and through you, life broadens. The seven flow. The past withers, the old dies, but the new unfolds. The seven prepare a new food which wipes away all old guilt. Heaven opens itself. The new food, heavenly bread, descends, not grown of the earth. It is born of light. Hunger, gloom, evil, and the grave are but a void. Already the new message is filling it. The earth is quiet and waits. Death is satiated forever. Behold, death waits only to be fed. The sad angel who devours all, yet still always hungers, will soon be appeased. The devourer of life hungers eternally. The giver of life acts eternally with the divine and the void is filled. You have been conceived, you will become children, love's pledge of the father and the mother, of heaven and earth, in the womb of the four. Its name is still secret. If union is celebrated in you, all is fulfilled. Raise your heads, may the seventh be with you, may he touch you. Immediately after the dialogue, I urge Hannah to tell us, even if it is not completely clear, what she felt during today's teaching. As far as I can recall, she said, I felt the individual essence of each of the seven souls of life. The first level of being is the mineral, the stone, the crystal. Its animating soul is the truth, the number and the law. The second level is the plant. Its soul is streaming love and the capacity to grow. The third level is the animal, enlivened by harmony, movement, and rhythm. These three levels are contained in the fourth, the human. But we, the so-called humans, are still not the human, the four. 
It is our task to live on the fourth level and become a conscious link between the created and the creating world. The fifth level is that of the angels where peace and silence reign. On the sixth level dwells the seraph, with burning power and joy. The seventh level is the mysterious, the highest degree of all life. I say to Hanna, this is now clear, but something is still incomprehensible for me. We were told that Yosef is the five, peace and silence, Lily the two, overflowing love, and I the six, radiating force, and that we all have the task of realizing the four. How can that be possible? Only through the fulfillment of the individual task is it possible to live the four, the universal task of the human. It is precisely the forces you just mentioned which enable you to reach the four, in which all seven souls are united. Never forget this key to understanding the angel's teaching. It is the mutual evolutionary attraction between above and below between divine and the human, between heavenly and earthly forces, between spirit and matter. All of these forces join in the middle, on the fourth level. They unite and give birth to the new child which is God and human, creator and created, light and matter. But the first step before this evolutionary universal accomplishment is to become conscious of your own individual task and to live it. This is the only gateway leading to the four, and it is also the only one to which we ourselves have the key. Hannah Dane continues. Have you ever asked yourself why your master repeatedly said to you, Go your own way, be independent? You have been formed after my image. May your eyes shine. This was said to you so that you would at last become aware of your own individuality, so that you would realize the six radiating force in your everyday life. Only in this way can you become a new human. Only thus can you actively participate in joining the creating world and the created world. Be aware that any diagram can only be a limited representation of existence. A diagram can never really convey love, the dynamic attraction between spirit and matter, and it could never express the union of the seven souls in a human being. On the 16th of April, ghettoization begins. Wednesday, April 19, 1944, mid-morning. Number 45. Dialogue. The Measuring Angel. A rumor has been spreading through Budapest that all Jewish men, no longer draftable for military service, will be deported to work camps. On the 16th of April, the forming of ghettos begins. The city is in a state of panic. Yosef anticipates his fate and becomes even more silent than usual. Hannah suffers deeply. She does her best not to show it, but I know how hard she is struggling for her inner balance. Lily knows no peace. She is with her pupils, who douse her thoroughly with their anxiety from early morning until late at night. Meanwhile, I race from official to official in a desperate attempt to save my friends. But I am met only by total disorganization, incompetence, 
and an all-pervasive apathy. No one knows what the following day will bring. As the collective fear spreads, the resultant panic is almost impossible to bear. Everyone suffers from depression. The one who measures speaks. Even the stone grows, the tree blossoms, the animal loves, but the human buries, destroys everything, violates the law. Bring fruit, for I shudder to cut the living. The word lives in you, but the fig tree that bears no fruit shall be felled. The bud opens, but will it bring fruit or merely leaves? In my hand the sword, the flaming sword, but my soul is troubled. The gardener pleads, Just one more day, Lord, I shall spade around the trunk, I shall fertilize generously, perhaps then the tree will bear fruit after all, if not, then you may cut it down, but please grant me this, I am the gardener, and the tree is dear to me. In my hand the sword of fire, and I know that I will chop if the Lord gives the sign, for I serve. I do not revolt, I do not scandalize. An angel's service is difficult too, but we are always ready to serve, always. Serve, serve day and night. To stand still is forbidden. You have been entrusted with many talents, and you must account for them. Behold, it is wonderful to serve the divine. Blossom, bear flowers, I implore you. Never before has a dialogue so shaken me as today's. The most stern and unapproachable of the angels has begged us with humility to blossom. Hannah says, if we give up now, we're truly lost. Neither heaven nor earth will take us in. We would be spat out. Hannah's words ring true. How, indeed, had I let myself be dominated by the outer situation? We had all allowed ourselves to become infected by the tragic state of our immediate surroundings. Editor's Note In the notes of Lilly, the following additional text was found dated April 18, 1944. We have not fulfilled the expectation. The fire was too weak. How careful we must be. If we give up now, we will be lost. Then neither earth nor heaven will receive us. They will spit us out. Hannah sees us as empty, helpless husks, floating meaninglessly above the fourth level of being. But the horrible calamity, to be frozen, rigid, but compared with the being spat out, being frozen would be a heavenly state. How terrible if the fourth level between the three earthly and the three heavenly spheres would remain empty and paralyzed. <laughs>